Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ultrasound Tips and Tricks. Today, we are gonna be talking about ultrasound guided hematoma blocks for distal radius and ulna fractures. The reason to use ultrasound in the hematoma block is really when you need to get the block done with one poke. There are lots of instances with compliant patients where you can get the needle into the wrist and muck around a little bit trying to find the uh, hematoma before you inject, but a lot of times that isn't really best, uh, maybe with a pediatric patient or someone in a lot of pain who's got a lot of anxiety about needles, it really is important to get into the right space in a fast and efficient manner, and that's where ultrasound can really help make your job and life a lot easier. So there are two ways to do the block. One is the static technique and the other is the dynamic technique. I prefer the static technique, meaning that before the injection, you essentially use the ultrasound to uh, find the fracture line, mark it on the skin surface, and then actually perform the block blind uh, or without active use of ultrasound. Uh, the other way of doing this with a dynamic approach would be to put a ultrasound cover onto the probe, uh, sterilize the skin, and then with the ultrasound in the active use, use the, uh, use the machine to guide your needle into the hematoma site. I don't like this quite as much. I don't think it's really necessary and it does add some time uh, to the procedure itself as far as guiding the needle and cleaning the machine, getting everything set up. So I do like the static technique better for those reasons. So this is an example of how you do the ultrasound guided hematoma block of the distal radius. You would find the patient's wrist, put it in position of comfort, and then over the dorsal aspect, put the linear transducer essentially right over the area uh, of the fracture where there's deformity, uh, and slide up and down until you see the fracture line in the center of the probe. Once you identify the fracture line uh, right at the transducer mark, I just take the probe off and mark the skin with my fingernail, uh, or if you have a pen or marker, you could do the same, and X marks the spot for where you're needing to inject. So this is a ultrasound of my distal radius. Uh, the white line here is the cortex of the bone, um, and as I slide distally, you will see it become the distal portion of my radius as it bends downward here, into the wrist crease, into the wrist joint. Uh, and then this bone is my, probably my scaphoid bone. So this is the, the normal architecture of the distal radius uh, without a fracture. And if I skip over more laterally, uh, I will find the ulna, because you can, you can do the, the ulna as well. And so there's the ulna, and that tip there is the, right over here, is the ulna styloid, and that's the most common area to fracture um, with a kind of a bulk bone fracture of the distal radius. Uh, so injecting into this area where there's a fracture line can be additionally helpful. This is a graphic representation of a distal radius fracture with hematoma formation. Obviously with a needle you're trying to enter the periosteal layer to get into the hematoma site to inject about 10 mils of 1% lidocaine. Um, and in, in the next picture, you'll see the uh, image on ultrasound that shows essentially these fracture lines. You don't usually see the hematoma as well. Uh, however, you can see the clear disruption of the periosteal layer uh, and the, the bone cortex there. And so uh, it's quite easy to see on ultrasound in the long axis. I also just want to mention that there have been several studies done over the past several years on the use of hematoma blocks and specifically ultra, ultrasound guided hematoma blocks. And they found that essentially they're equally effective for pain control in distal radius fractures when compared to procedural sedation. So when you weigh in how much time it takes to set up procedural sedation versus just doing a simple block, I think this is actually a really useful block for a large portion of our patients. Uh, clearly not everyone and some people will need to be sedated for reductions, um, but this is a great tool to have in your toolkit.